Today, we're gonna do something a bit more casual and make a tier list with all of the hardware wallets I've tested in 2025. So let's dive into it. Let's start out with Tandem Wallet. Tandem is an incredibly user-friendly device. It is so quick to set up and it's really easy for users who don't know much about crypto to use. Since it's NFC, we use NFC cards every day. And this is something that really makes Tandem stand out because most wallets are quite hard to use and the learning curve is high. But there's a few issues with Tandem that set me off from giving it the highest score. One of those is that yes, we can generate a seed phrase, but we can only generate it in the mobile app. and it's it's a big no-no to put seed phrases on a mobile online device instead of on an offline hardware wallet. And that brings me to the second problem with Tandem is that it doesn't have a screen. If you don't have a screen on your hardware wallet, there is no way to confirm what you're seeing on your, your mobile device is the same as what you're seeing on your hardware wallet. So basically what we're doing is something called blind signing. We're just signing transactions without really checking it against the other device. And for this reason, I have to give Tandem a B. The next wallet is one you've probably never heard of and this is Cardware. So Cardware is a Bitcoin only wallet and it's the first hardware wallet to be made from Africa, specifically South Africa. And they are new last year. They literally just released this device, reviewed it. It is an incredibly simplistic and stylish device for a good cost. The transparent casing makes it very unique. It gives that kind of retro -y feel. Another part that I really love about Cardware is how you generate seed phrases. So you have to like roll dice, uh, D20 dice 64 times I think or a D6 hundred times, completely randomizing these numbers. It's a bit more clunky being a QR scanning device, still pretty simple to use. And the app is like as simple as they come. First of all, you don't have to download an app. It's, it's a web browser. And second of all, you can do two things. You can send Bitcoin or receive Bitcoin. And sometimes we just need that simple device for Bitcoin purposes. I'm gonna have to give it an A. The next wallet we have is Bitbox. Now, Bitbox also comes in Bitcoin only, but I was able to receive the multi-edition. And one thing that I really didn't like about Bitbox was their lack of token support. I think it's only Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Litecoin's dead, so I don't know who would buy it for that purpose. But as more chains come out in 2025, I just feel it's way, way behind the curve for what is acceptable in a wallet that has multiple coins. Also, I felt like the navigation with like the little touch sensors were extremely strange. It just wasn't a user-friendly experience. And having the USB mail, I don't even know what you call that, the mail piece sticking up, it makes it more awkward to use than just plugging something into it because I had to plug it directly into my phone. It was awkward and I felt like the build quality wasn't up to par for the cost. And I have to mention that there were some UI issues in the app itself, which is quite rare to see on a finished product. So for these reasons, Bitbox scores a C. Moving on to the Ledger X, this is actually my most used hardware wallet. Believe it or not, I mean, I've literally tried and owned all of these wallets and <laughs> I still trust the Ledger X more than anything for some reason. Maybe it's laziness because I don't want to move it off onto a new device, but it's honestly done me wonders for like five years now. So that's quite a long life when screen devices only last three to five years. I think for the cost, there's not as much storage for some tokens. Ledger Live is the best app out there. The small screen is more difficult to use and the two buttons are a bit more difficult as well for navigation. Compared to some of the other Ledger devices, the X has to go in B. Moving on, no bias to my favorite hardware wallet, which is just, it's just gonna go straight to S. Whatever Ledger learned from making the stacks, they perfected it in the flex. Like there's no doubt in my mind that they went through some hard chips in that stacks that really, really helped this design. First of all, I always have this device out because it has a screen. It's literally just an art decoration on my desk. It's weird because we don't think of a hardware wallet as something we'd leave out in our house, but I don't even need to store anything on this. And I just like to leave it as decoration. The build quality on this thing is really unlike anything else. It feels solid. It sounds cool. I think the touch screen is amazing. It's super smooth and seamless. The app is excellent, as we said before. It's not the cheapest device, but I think if you're gonna go with Ledger, the screen is so much bigger so you can see your transactions better than the X. Let's move on to the Ledger S Plus. Now, I've been using this device for a while, but there is one tragic flaw with this device, and that is the small storage that it contains. You can only download five or six different blockchains total until your storage is completely filled up. And it's obviously a marketing decision because it's a cheap device, and 
from this device, they expect you to upgrade like Apple. I would say this though, if you're not a person who has tons of different tokens from different blockchains, you're gonna be completely buying on this $59 device. Another caveat is that the screen is super small and the buttons are also tiny. So it's really not the easiest device to navigate on. It has no Bluetooth. So it's only type C, which can be annoying because the cable gets in the way sometimes. But again, with Ledger app, this device is solid. And I would say since it has a screen, it's above Tangem, but it's definitely below the X plus with less storage. Moving on is the SafePal X1. SafePal makes basically budget only devices. Everything they sell is below $100. They are not pretty devices. Let's just say it, Frank. This one looks like a calculator. Actually, by having more buttons, it was easier to use than the S Plus and the X. Because usually budget devices only have two buttons or four buttons, which we can see on this whole list is that navigation's not easy if the device doesn't have a touchscreen. There are no crazy features on this device, but it does connect with Bluetooth. And that's quite hard to find for a device under $100. And SafePal app is really good. It looks nice nice, it feels nice, everything went smooth and seamlessly. And actually they have some of the best token support of any hardware wallet brand out there. I think it's over 200 blockchains and tons of NFT support. So this wallet is a super good budget option at $79. It's gonna slot here in between the S Plus and the X. Be sure to check out alldrawncrypto.com for any hardware wallet reviews, ratings, and discounts. Next is the popular Trezor Safe 3. Trezor only connects with Type C, just like the S Plus. And actually it mirrors the S Plus quite closely. They're both clearly low budget options for the two biggest hardware wallet brands. Build quality is quite similar, but I think it's actually, for me, it's too light, but actually Trezor Safe 3 is one of my most used wallets. It's got decent token support, kind of lacking compared to competitors. With Trezor, you're buying their reputation and their transparency. Trezor's one of the only, if not the only, I can't really remember if there's anyone else, fully 100% open source is their content. This includes the secure element chip, which usually people get from third-party manufacturers. Because Trezor is all about open source, they just made their own chip for this device. It's pretty cool. So I would say that it slots in here in B tier, just ahead of the SafePal X1. Moving on, we're gonna go with the EliPal Titan 2. It's kind of unique just like the Cardware Wallet because it uses QR codes to scan instead of Bluetooth or Type-C. So they claim that it's 100% air-gapped. Build quality on this device is up there with the Flex. I wouldn't say it's as nice, it's a bit bulky and solid, but it just feels firm. Like it's made of aluminum, so it has this toughness to it that isn't usually found in these wallets. It's got a huge screen, which is great for signing transactions clearly. One of the most annoying things are the firmware updates, which you need to have a SD card to put into your computer and then bring the files over, then bring it to the device. Another caveat to EliPal is that you can only charge the device with this included security adapter. It is kind of annoying because you want to be able to charge the device. I can leave most of these devices that hold the charge out on my desk and plug in a type C and it's good. But in order to do this with the Titan 2, I would need to leave that security adapter out. And I think the biggest part that pushes people off of Alipal is that they are very closed source. So they don't release a lot of the code, the software or firmware, which is a shame because these devices are all about openness and transparency. All that information said, I'm also going to place them in B tier just ahead of the X. Moving on to Tangem Ring, this is the most unique card rule that's ever come out. Who would have known that you can put an NFC chip inside of a ring? Pretty cool. I mean, it makes sense. The main idea of the ring doesn't hold true. The point of a ring, right, is to carry with you wherever you go. Why would you carry a device with you if you're not going to use it? I'm not paying for transactions in stores with this ring. I, I really wish I could take this ring and just scan it places and use it like a debit card or a credit card, but we're not there yet. You also have to take the ring off to use it, which is all, uh, pretty annoying too. I'll be honest that this device has collected dust ever since I got it. The only reason you would buy the ring over the card is because you like rings. You like to wear rings. If you don't wear a ring, do not buy this device. Just buy the card. It's half the price. For cool factor, it's slightly ahead of the card because it still has cards with it. And for the most expensive wallet on this list, we have the Ledger Stacks. Now the Ledger Stacks is essentially the same thing as the Flex and there's a few key differences that aren't very distinguishable. So one is that it has a side binding where you can see your name, you can see the side label. Another is that it's magnetic, so it can stick to things that are magnets. I mean, they first had the idea for these things to magnetically clip together. And there's this hilarious video of uh, Tony Fidel, who is one of the guys who helped with the iPod or iPad or iPhone. I don't know, he he helped Steve Jobs. So they hired this guy to come on and he <laughs> he's like, yeah, it's pretty cool. We, uh, we thought we would uh, just like,
like clip these devices together. Why not magnets? Why not make them as fun as you could actually you know, have fun with. This device is $400. Who is going to buy two or three or four for the whole family and then stick them together? It doesn't make sense. But apart from that strange decision, I am glad that they decided to include these cases with it. So it's like, they call it a magnet case. And you just take it and you go, but they made use of the magnets at least. Oh yeah, and one other distinguishing feature from the Flex is that this Stax is Qi wireless charging. It doesn't make it worth $150 more in value. There is quite a big difference between the e-ink clarity. I don't know if they figured something out, but the lines are way sharper on the Flex too. With all that said, Stax is going to go in high A tier. Next is the Cypherock X1. I have a lot to say about Cypherock as a company. That's going to be for another video. Cypherock the device, I found so many things that are off with this device as a new company. The device feels extremely cheap. The app is not very good and it's desktop only. When most wallets are using, you know, mobile apps because that's how you reach the most amount of users. The cards were easy to bend in half, which is not good for longevity. The Shamir system that they're using with the four cards to back up is cool. But I mean, just think of this. How often are you going to spread your cards out to different locations? I live in a city. I don't have access access to a backyard to bury one. I don't have access to a deposit box because it's just too expensive to justify me having one of them. I don't have any friends I would trust enough to also leave the device with them because I can't even trust leaving my keys with them. I'd probably lose their keys too. I think it's just not practical. For all of these reasons, it's slightly ahead of Bitbox. Next is One Key Classic 1S, probably the most difficult one to save the bunch. Specifically speaking though, I'm a huge fan of their app. One Key app is excellent. They have some features that aren't available in other apps. Their DeFi section is excellent. Just they cover a wide range of things. Their UI is smooth. They have outstanding token support, which is important. You can put NFTs on there, which is also good. The device itself feels a bit cheap. I think uh, it's it's quite easy to bend. It, it's almost too thin. It probably could be snapped in half if I really tried. And the matte black finish on it, it smudges a lot. So if you're the kind of person who likes things clean and orderly and not scratched, it's definitely not the right device for you because it kind of annoyed me and that's why it's sits in the closet. The screen also was a bit glitchy and it wasn't as clear as some of the other screens that are coming out from competitors. And I would say it's just below the Ledger X because I would still prefer to use the Ledger X over one key. Here we have a Tangem competitor called Cool Wallet. Now Cool Wallet Go is, probably shouldn't say this, but it feels like a complete copy of Tangem. It's slightly worse because it has two cards instead of three. So the whole point of Tangem is that it has three cards. And with those three cards, you can back up three different times in case you lose the card. If I have three cards, I lose one. I have two cards left. Great. I have two ways to back up. Lose it again. Oh no, I only have one card left. I should probably get more. Cool Wallet only has two. So if you lose one card right away, you only have one card to back up your information and you're back with the seed phrase problem. It's also the same price, which doesn't really make sense. The card feels a bit cheaper too. And I think the designs aren't as great as Tangem. Because something we didn't mention actually is that Tangem has a ton of eye-catching and appealing colorful designs. It was actually quicker to set this thing up than Tangem, but it's the, the general, you know, NFC tapping experience. For these reasons, Cool Wallet Go is going to go right behind Tangem in B tier. And that leads us to another SafePal device in the SafePal S1. The S1 is another QR scanning type device. The build quality isn't really up to par, but I mean, it's quite a cheap wallet. I think it's 49 US dollars. For the price, that makes sense that it's all plastic. The screen isn't the greatest quality and it's very, very small and hard to see. But saying that, it does have one of the best crypto wallet apps and it supports a ton of different blockchains as we mentioned before. Now there were some talks about vulnerabilities from Kraken Labs so this is a bit of a worry with this specific device but altogether I think for a budget device it's, it's okay. I put it right in front of Cypher Rock. I would 100% recommend the X over the S1. Next we have a wallet you may have never heard of and that's the QX Neo X. This was actually the first hardware wallet that I was ever sent for this channel and for that I'm super grateful. I just wish the wallet was a little better. It's lacking in so many ways. It is super heavy, it's big, but doesn't feel like it's solid quality. It's definitely metal, but it has this break, this seam in it that can actually be peeled open. The app was the buggiest app I've used yet. And it's just priced a bit higher than what it's worth in my opinion. I don't have much to say about this wallet because it just wasn't for me and it didn't work as smooth as it should have. D tier. And lastly is the Cool Wallet Pro. This card's different than the GOAT because it literally has a battery inside it and unfortunately that battery kept dying every single time I tried to set it 
it up. So I don't have any hope that this device is going to last long term. It also has a screen and a button. And like this thing is literally a car. I don't know how they did it. It's incredible, but it just doesn't work. And there's no nice way to say it. The screen's also far too small to confirm transactions accurately. Koala app is pretty good. So that is a plus. But with those caveats, it's really hard to justify paying $149 for this device. D tier. And there you have it. So here is my tier list of all the wallets that I have tested in the past year. Do you agree with my ratings? Let me know in the comments below. And how would you have rated these wallets based on your experience? Be sure to check out alldrawncrypto.com for any hardware wallet reviews, ratings, and discounts. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one. Now this wallet is different. It should honestly be a crime to apply for three months of renovation. Thanks for watching.